Good evening, everybody. So thank you for joining us for the Show Me Your Future StriveScan and MOACAC uh, partnership. We are uh, coming to you live. And before we get started, I just wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. So for any of you that have any questions, there is a Q&A button on your screen that you can use to ask our presenter tonight from the University of Utah uh, if you have any questions. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists presenting are not able to see you or hear you, which means that Q&A is really your only opportunity to ask any questions. Um, there are also different se sessions happening uh, throughout the next couple of weeks, and you can check those out on the moacac.org. Uh, um, in addition to that, if you, you know, have any follow-up questions and want to check out a recording of this session, you can also do that online at moacac.org. So I will get it turned over to our presenter and let her take it away. Perfect, thank you. Let me go ahead and grab my screen share for my PowerPoint presentation. So good evening, everyone. My name is Mariah Johnson. I'm Mission House. Um, and we'll go ahead and jump right in. This is actually a really beautiful image of our president circle, which is a collection of our oldest buildings on campus. Um, and something that I want to point out is if you're looking closely, you'll see some construction happening in the lower right hand corner and in the background there, you can see construction going on. And um, I point that out to say that uh, we, even though we are the oldest school uh, west of the Missouri River, uh, we continue to innovate and reimagine ways to not only adapt to things happening around us in the world, like a pandemic or the app of the internet, but we're also trying to be on the cutting edge and really uh, create students that will be the leaders of tomorrow. Now, high overview, um, just, just some quick stats about us. We actually have two campus locations, if you weren't aware. Our main one that we're really talking about today is Salt Lake City in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, but we also have a campus in Incheon, South Korea. So, and that is open if you wanna do some kind of study abroad there and do some program there, you can definitely look into that and we can talk about that further after the session. Uh, we have over 24,000 undergraduate students. So we are considered a large school by any means, but we do try to offer a small school feel. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. So for every one professor, there's only about 17 students. Some years that actually trends closer to a 16 to one. So it kind of depends on the year, but our average class size is only 23 students. So I point this out to say also, because we try to offer that small school feel so you can connect with professors and collaborate with your peers much easier and have that more personalized experience with all of the amenities that come with a large institution like the University of Utah. We have distinguished faculty that are, that are leading researchers in their various fields, and a lot of them are conducting research at the U. We are a Research One institution, and we were recently inducted into the Association of American Universities, which is an organization recognized in institutions performing high-level quality research. And we'll talk a little bit more about academic programs in a bit, but I wanted to plant those seeds in your brain. Now, when you think of college, a lot of people think about a college town. Um, so think about the kind of things that come with a college town. Um, the University of Utah has more, much more than that. We are a full-fledged college city. We are only 10 minutes east of downtown Salt Lake. Um, you can see the pictures on the left-hand side there of our downtown areas. Uh, we have lots of shopping. We have a booming restaurant scene, a booming art scene. There's lots of businesses downtown and different companies, and they are always looking for students to fulfill um, part-time jobs and internships and fulfill their full-time roles after they graduate. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see our state capital, and they partner with our Hinckley Institute of Politics to offer students internships there as well. So you can do maybe a city government internship or state or county government. Um, we also send students abroad for internships. So if you wanna intern in another country or study in another country, 
you have that opportunity too. But something also really unique about our location is not only the proximity to downtown, but to at the outdoors. We're within an hour of 11 world-class ski resorts. So if you're really into skiing, or like me, you've never done skiing before in your life, but you wanna try it out for the first time, definitely a wonderful place to do that, as Utah is known to have the best snow on earth. Or maybe you don't like snow at all. Maybe you really like mountain biking, or camping, or rock climbing, or kayaking. These are all things that you can do within a half day's drive of our campus. And that's really hard to find an institution that maybe does all of those things, but uh, we try to offer all of those opportunities to our students. Now, jumping into academics a little bit, within the University of Utah, we have over um, 150 academic programs. So those look like majors, minors, or certificate programs um, offered throughout 18 different academic colleges. So maybe you already have in mind what you wanna study and you uh, have a tunnel vision on that, and that's totally fine. Um, but statistics do show that about a third of all college students do change their major at least once or twice once they enroll. So, and that's totally okay. But maybe you have no idea what you want to study. So I'm going to highlight a couple of our programs that are really the most popular on campus. Business is a large one. Our David Eccles School of Business has nine different majors. And if you are interested in business, I highly suggest checking out our Business Scholars Program. This is a program that offers freshmen direct uh, admission into the School of Business. So if you were admitted not through Business Scholars, you might take a couple years of prerequisites before applying to the School of Business and then getting into your major, but Business Scholars allows you to be admitted immediately into the School of Business. And then that means that you could take those major classes earlier. It allows you to explore all of the majors that we offer right up front so that you can know what business major you wanna pursue um, during your four years with us. Also the business scholars, as well as the business school as a whole offers special internship opportunities, scholarship opportunities, ways to get involved in and off campus and around the globe. So we are really focused on not only uh, learning within the classroom and on our campus, but also learning around the world, as you'll see through many of our programs. One that's really rising in popularity for us is our Bachelor's of Science in Games or Game Design. So maybe you're like me and you've grown up playing video games and you're, you can't imagine doing anything else. Uh, well, maybe think about designing games. Um, Bachelor of Science in Games is just one option, but we do have three different routes for students interested in game design. Whether you're more interested in the artistic side of it and the fine art side of it, or you're more interested in the hardcore um, computer science side of it. But the BS in Games is a nice balance between those two fields. We have top industry professional, professionals teaching your courses in these cutting edge of video game technology. Now, like I mentioned, we are a lot of this in, or maybe just for science, uh, but really anyone in any field can do research at the University of Utah, even as undergraduates. And I say this now because our Bachelors of Science in Games students have been doing research and creating actual video games that are meant to aid people experiencing depression, anxiety. So they're creating actual games to help folks uh, alleviate the symptoms of those mental health issues. So that's a really cool way to not only uh, create games and do what you love, but maybe also help people around the world. And we do have one of the top game design programs in the country as rated by the Princeton Review. Um, BS in Games is housed in the College of Engineering and most of our majors are very popular in the College of Engineering, as you can imagine. Um, you can see all the majors we offer on the left-hand side there, um, but I also wanna point out there's a lot of opportunity within those majors. So maybe you're interested in aerospace science or aerospace engineering, you can do that as a concentration under mechanical engineering. So lots of these majors have their own concentration options and you just have to find them within the major. So. That's a wonderful opportunity too, to specialize in something beyond the major that's listed on your diploma. We have some notable alumni from our College of Engineering too. 
Edwin Catmull, who is not only the current president of Walt Disney Studios, but also the founder of Pixar, um, the founder of Atari, is also an alum of the U, as well as John Warnock, who is a co-founder of Adobe. Um, and because of that, all University of Utah students get the full Adobe suite for free as being a student. So that's a nice little perk for your tuition investment. Um, I want to mention our Lasan Studios. Uh, this does have to do with business quite a bit. It, is housed, it houses our Lasan Entrepreneur Institute, but any student of any major can participate in the Entrepreneur Institute or in Lasan Studios. And this building is actually a, a student housing facility, so you can live in this building, um, but you don't have to live there to take advantage of the amenities and the spaces they have. They have spaces for students to collaborate. They have a maker space for students to create products, whether that's with some saws and with woodworking equipment or a 3D printer that's available for all students to use for free. Um, this is where students go to start businesses. So in 2019 alone, we had over 26 businesses started. So you can see 35 companies launched in the last two years, 26 of those for last year alone. And these are all students doing this. So these are students collaborating with each other and students from all majors, from business, from engineering, from the arts, from social studies. So there's definitely no limit. And I would say the only limit is your imagination. So very exciting things happening there. We also have a lot of students interested in pre-med and they wanna to go to medical school um, or go into the medical field in some way. Um, but maybe they're not quite sure exactly what major they want to do because um, you can do any major and apply to medical school. Um, we have awesome pre-professional advisors to help students not only select a major and maybe some minors and figuring out the academic programs best suited for their interests, but they also help make sure they're completing all the prerequisite coursework and all the uh, internship and hours and the shadowing and the community service hours that are required for a medical school application or a nursing school application. So, um, but beyond medicine, we also have pre-professional advisors for the law school or maybe um, for uh, business if you're interested in graduate program for business. So check out our pre-professional advising if you're interested and you know that you're gonna go beyond your undergraduate degree. Now, a couple of programs I wanna highlight here. Um, like I mentioned, maybe you have no idea and none of those major suggestions help you out whatsoever, and that's okay. We have a program called Major Exploration, which does consist of a course, as well as specified private advising with our academic advisors to really help you figure out your interests, maybe your strengths, maybe your career pathways that you're looking at. Um, and help you figure out what major is gonna get you to where you wanna be. Um, I would also suggest looking into our LEAP program, which is a program that allows you to take general education courses as all University of Utah students are required to do, but um, they are smaller class sizes. So pretty much any large university you're gonna go to, you're gonna run into large class sizes, maybe for an English or for a science course or some kind of lecture that has one to 200 students. Um, the U is no different in that aspect, but LEAP is a program that allows you to still take those courses that you have to take, but with a smaller class size. And there's not an added cost to enrolling in LEAP. So beyond your tuition, there's not an extra cost for LEAP. Um, another program that might offer you similar amenities is our Honors College. It's not highlighted on this slide, but I'll mention it. If you're interested in not only smaller class size and building that community, and that rapport with your peers and your faculty, but you want a more rigorous curriculum and um, an honors bachelor's degree, which is the highest degree we confer, check out the Honors College. Um, both Business Scholars, which I mentioned earlier, and Honors College, they have an application that is integrated into our common application. So you will find those questions on our general application when you're filling it out. Now we're gonna shift a little bit and talk about a couple of our building amenities that we have to offer on campus. Uh, we like to think that we have some really nice housing facilities. In the top middle, you can see our Collard Village, which is actually a brand new housing facility that is open for the first time for students this fall. So the students that moved in there, 
this fall, they are the first class to be living there. It is for first year students only, and it's home to something really cool called living learning communities or themed communities. And these are kind of self-explanatory. These are groups of students that live together in a similar wing or part of the building, and they're grouped by maybe a common major or a common interest um, or a common passion. So maybe you wanna live with other students in the STEM fields, or you wanna live with other students passionate about outdoor leadership and community involvement. Um, or maybe you wanna live with other students that are in health and wellness. So those are all options. Um, most of those are in Collard Village, but some of them might also be in the Lausanne Studios where the Entrepreneurship Institute is held. So check out the housing and residential education website because they lay out all of these communities really well. Um, so you can really see if there's something you're interested in. Or maybe you just want the more traditional experience. Hey, you don't care about living in a community like that. That's totally fine too. We have more traditional residence halls. Um, like you can see in the bottom left hand corner, in the bottom right hand corner are some of our more traditional residence buildings for students. Um, and some of those might be open to students of all um, levels too. So maybe sophomores, juniors, and seniors as well. But I will say maybe your siblings, your parents will tell you horror stories about residence halls and dorms and that they're very old and musty and this and that. Um, but our residence halls, our oldest ones on campus, are really not much older than you. They were only built for the 2002 Winter Olympics when they were hosted in Salt Lake City because they were our Olympic village. So the athletes participating in the Olympics stayed at our dorms because um, it was built for them. Um, and after that, we started moving students in there. So that's a really cool fun fact I like to share. Um, we do not require students to live on campus. So maybe if you have family and that's able to lower your costs, um, I say, you know, go for it if that's what you want. Anything to lower college costs these days. But um, studies do tend to show that students who live on campus tend to have a higher GPA. A lot of that's because it's easier to walk to class. Maybe the class is right across from your building, especially if you're in business and you live at Collard Village, for example. Um, but you also have that support system of being around students all the time and always being able to find a study buddy and having your food um, prepared there and everything like that. So we do also have housing scholarships too. If that's something you're not sure you can make happen, but you wanna make it happen, we can talk about housing scholarships also. But another cool building I wanna mention is our Student Life Center. This is essentially a recreation center, but I think it really goes above and beyond really any rec center I've ever been in. We have a four-story rock climbing wall, a bouldering wall. They do have an Olympic-sized swimming pool there that's indoor and outdoor, so it's for year-round use. It has a 32-person uh, jacuzzi, so if you and 31 other friends wanna spend a night at the spa, um, you can definitely do that. Um, and I encourage you, uh, make some friends out there. Um, but we also have more traditional running tracks or basketball, volleyball courts, but also like ellipticals, treadmills, your free weights. And we also have fitness classes, group fitness classes. So maybe um, you're just starting a health and wellness journey for the first time in your life. You can still find a community to feel supported in doing so, but also maybe learn how to use all the equipment or learn how to exercise. And they always have events here too. So uh, they like to do what's called dive-in movies where you grab a floaty or a paddle board and you sit on the water in our pool and then they uh, project a movie like Finding Nemo or something like that. We've been voting for them to have Jaws forever and they have yet to have Jaws, but we're waiting for Jaws to be, to be prod broadcasted for us. Um, and maybe none of that tickles your fancy, but you still wanna create something that's gonna make college really memorable and make it a memorable experience. We do have over 600 student clubs and organizations, so pretty much anything you could think of, you probably have it, but maybe we don't, and you can always start your own club. So some examples we have are finance or accounting club or language and culture-based clubs or anime club or pre-dentistry, and pre-dentistry are really good friends with our Cupcakes Mountain Dew Doritos Club. So quite a variety of options. We also have student government too. So if you're really interested in being involved at maybe a higher 
administrative level and really making a lasting impact on campus, that's an option to our student government. Now, I like to take this time to also mention kind of a piece of advice is that um, think about the kind of experiences that you are having in high school or that you've had in high school that you want to continue to have. Maybe you're part of a sport like a pickup basketball or soccer that you want to continue playing in college, or maybe you're in marching band and you want to continue doing that, or you're in really involved with a cultural group in your town and you want to continue participating in that and being that kind of leader. Um, think about those kind of experiences you have had and look for institutions that have those that you want to continue. So if you want to continue any of those things, look for schools that have those opportunities. Or maybe you want to look for schools that have experiences you've never had but have always wanted to do. For example, I had never been out of the country before I went to college, um, but I knew I wanted to study abroad. So it was important to me that I went to a school that had that as an option for me. So think about things like that. Keep that in your mind, not only when you're considering the U, but when you're considering other institutions, because I think that'll help you all a lot. Um, probably one of the most fun experiences to have on campus is our athletics. Um, this is our Mighty Utah Student Section, or our MUS. Uh, this is our football MUS, so our football student section. It's you and about 6,000 of your closest friends who are fellow peers and students of yours. Um, every home game, we have this large student section, and they do tailgating before every game. All the students get a free t-shirt. You can see that they're all matching. And it's just a really fun time. I personally know nothing about football, um, and I'm sure some of these students don't either, but it's still a fun time. Here, they're actually pictured doing or getting ready to do what's called the third down jump, which at some point uh, during the third down of whatever that is, um, everyone starts jumping up and down and screaming at the same time. And this was created as an intimidation tactic for the opposing team. But kind of a fun note about it is when they do this, it actually registers on our campus seismograph stations as a minor earthquake. So I like to say that to show that not only has ESPN recognized this as one of the most rowdy and spirited student sections, but also our campus recognizes our students as literally groundbreaking. Now, speaking of athletics, I'd be remiss not to mention that we are part of the PAC-12 or the Pacific Athletic Conference. Um, this is an athletic conference, so maybe you are playing high level um, competitive sports and you wanna be interested in, um, or you are interested in recruiting and playing for a large university, the University of Utah is an option for that. And I would encourage you to reach out to the athletics department if that's a route you wanna pursue. But even if it's not, I still encourage you to keep this in the back of your mind because in a way you can think of the Pac-12 as an academic conference because in order for us to even be invited to join the conference, we did have to achieve a certain academic standard that rivals that of our partner institutions. So the other schools you think of in the Pac-12, you think of a high caliber education, you can expect the same quality of education at the University of Utah, um, and we are the most affordable Pac-12 school for out-of-state students. So getting some bang for your buck. Now we're gonna transition more into the logistics, talking about admissions, financial aid, scholarships, um, and maybe visiting campus. So um, our application is open. So if you're a senior right now in high school, you can apply um, starting now if you want it or after this presentation. Um, our early action deadline is December 1 and our early action two is February 1. So these are essentially priority um, admission consideration dates. Um, these dates will also be on the Common App where you will find our application. So if you don't remember them, they'll be there too and also on our website. Uh, like I said, we are on the Common App, so definitely leave yourself plenty of time to fill that out. Now, all transcripts must be sent directly from the high school to our office in order to be considered official. Most high schools are able to send them electronically, and that's perfect, and that's what's easiest for everyone. But if your school only sends them physically, that's totally fine. We'll still accept them. I would just encourage you to request those as soon as possible to make sure that there's no delays in the mail or in the processing of your application, especially as our office starts to work remotely more and more, um, there'll be a little bit more of a delay getting those transcripts scanned in physically. 
Now, an important thing to note is that we are test optional for admissions beginning fall 2021. So if you're looking at applying and beginning next fall, uh, the ACT or SAT is optional. Uh, we understand this was a year unlike any other and it was nearly impossible to get into a test date for some states. So if you were not able to get into one or maybe you're not as happy with your score, um, you can select on the Common App at the beginning if you want your scores considered or not. So make sure you don't miss that question because that will also affect the timing of the processing of your application. Now, we do have a number of out-of-state merit-based scholarships. Test scores are currently required for those. Um, I repeat, test scores are required for merit or academic-based scholarship consideration and for direct admission to the College of Engineering. Now, if you are interested in engineering, but the test score is a barrier, um, you can still be admitted as pre-engineering. So it's not the end all be all, it's not the end of the tunnel for you. Um, you can still pursue engineering without a test score. That route will just look a little bit different. Now, if there's any changes to either of those policies, they will be posted on our websites, on our admissions website, financial aids website, College of Engineering website. So if that's um, somewhere that you find some concern, definitely keep a lookout for those. I also want to mention we use what's called a holistic review process, which is especially important this year as we are not requiring test scores. So this means that we're going to look at your GPA, but we're going to place a lot of weight on your grades, um, the individual grades and the coursework you're taking. We're going to look at the rigor of your coursework. Um, if you take AP, IB, honors, concurrent enrollment, anything like that, that all works in your favor. We will also consider other personal factors. So maybe involvement in extracurriculars or involvement in the community, um, whatever it is, maybe a part-time job, put those on your application too. And especially put on your application if COVID-19 proved to be a real hardship and barrier for you to perform well in school, let us know about that. Or if you have any other sort of um, barrier or event that prevented you from, from performing well in a particular semester or year um, and your grades show that, let us know about that because um, we will take that into consideration. If you don't tell us anything, then we don't always know um, what to think or what's going on, but if you tell us, that helps us make a more informed decision. Now, I mentioned we are the most affordable school of the Pac-12 for our out-of-state students. And we have both merit and need-based scholarships. Um, our need-based scholarships do not require test scores, but you do have to make sure you fill out the free application for federal student aid by February 1st in order to get the best consideration possible for those need-based scholarships. Now, especially for you students in Missouri, it's particularly important to keep in mind our residency process. This is a process which allows out-of-state students to gain in-state residency so they can go from paying out-of-state tuition their first year to in-state tuition their second year. The state of Utah makes it very easy to do this um, and we help students along with that process. Here are the steps to do that. Essentially, your first year um, at the University of Utah and the summer thereafter all count towards you living continuously in the state of Utah for 12 continuous months. Proof financial independence does mean your parents would not be able to claim you as dependents on their taxes if you're gonna go the residency route. So if that's something you're thinking about, that's definitely a conversation to have with them to think about what the tax implications are and really what's gonna be most affordable um, and the best option for the entire family as a lot of this conversation is. Um, the established domiciliary ties looks like getting a Utah driver's license, registering to vote in our state, and maybe registering your car if you choose to bring one. Um, but if you don't, that's totally fine. And then you fill out a form online proving all of this, and then you're able to start paying in state your second year. And about the savings for that, and the difference between that is about $20,000 um, between out of state and in state, as evidenced here. The first column on your left are tuition rates for our in state students. And the column on the right in the middle is for out-of-state students. Um, so you can see about a 20, over $20,000 difference. Room and board is about the same. Um, 
But like I said, we have housing scholarships, maybe have a different housing option that's going to lower that cost, or even just small decisions could significantly impact um, your cost. Maybe you choose to have a roommate or maybe two roommates. Maybe you get a smaller meal plan with less meals per week. Maybe you don't pay to park a car on campus and instead you just use your free transit pass throughout the valley. Those are all things that are going to lower your costs. And of course, scholarships will indeed lower those costs. Now, this tuition rate is based on a full year. That's fall and spring, enrolled in 13 credit hours per semester. Um, to be considered full-time, uh, it's 12 credit hours. So you might have a little bit less tuition your first year, depending on how many credits take. Or maybe if you're in a more rigorous program, it could be more. Maybe you take 15 credit hours in the spring. So uh, it does vary, but that's kind of the average. Now, um, I want to kind of start wrapping up so I can make sure I can get to your questions and answer those live as many as possible. Um, but I do want to encourage you to check out our campus both virtually um, and possibly in person if you're able to do that. Um, we do have virtual events at the link on our website there and you can catch our virtual campus tour which is led by our university ambassadors. You can also just find it on YouTube. That's usually the easiest for me is just to search in the YouTube bar, University of Utah Campus Tour. You can find it really easily there. Um, maybe you are making a trip, maybe you have a fall break or something and you're making a road trip out to Utah. We are going to begin resuming uh, in-person tours the week of uh, October 12th. Um, we, are, we are planning to offer those um, really up until the, our Thanksgiving break. We're not sure we're gonna be able to continue offering them after that. Um, but you can expect during that time that we will be able to offer in-person tours every day and multiple times throughout the day. Um, we're going to try to stagger it as much as possible so we can make sure the groups are as small as possible, um, spaced out as far as possible. So um, if your parents are wondering about that or your guardians are wondering about campus tours, um, definitely check in with them and continue to check our website to see when those dates and times are available so you can sign up for them before before you make plans to travel out. Now, here is my contact information. Um, if you forgot who I am, like I said, my name is Mariah Johnson and I'm an admissions counselor with the U. Um, I am your go-to admissions counselor um, for the state of Missouri. So um, that is my work cell phone there. So feel free to call me there, um, as well as my work email, mariah.johnson at utah.edu. Or if maybe you want to have a more in-depth discussion, you are welcome to schedule an appointment with me if you go to admissions.utah.edu. And on the right-hand side, there's a menu you can pull over. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the tab that says, Meet Your Counselors. And then if you scroll down further, you'll find my face, that exact face right there. And you can click on it, um, schedule either a 15 or 30-minute appointment with me, either via Zoom or by phone, whichever is easiest and most accessible for you. Um, and leave me some notes about what you wanna talk about and um, we'll get that conversation going. So without further ado, that concludes um, my presentation portion and I would like to move into the Q&A. So that if folks do have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and I'm happy to answer those. And I will answer them live too, so. And while you're thinking of questions and while you're dropping those into the Q&A, um, I want to plug our social media. We also we have a University of Utah um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. We also have our Utah admissions pages for all of those things. So definitely check those out. Our University of Utah ambassadors also have their own Instagram page and they do takeovers all the time. So if you want to really know what the student experience is like, um, I encourage you to check out those pages. Now we got a question in asking, uh, what is the GPA you will need to get in? And that is a fantastic question. Uh, we don't have a strict minimum GPA um, and certainly no strict test score requirement in order to be admitted. For GPA, we like to see that students have at least a 3.42 unweighted GPA. Um, we definitely, that's about our average. So we certainly admit students that fall below 3.42. And of course, we admit students that go 
above the 3.42. Um, a lot of it has to do with the holistic review process. So maybe if you have a lower GPA, maybe you're hovering around a 3.0 or somewhere around there, definitely beef up your application with some information about uh, extracurriculars you're involved in, any familial responsibilities you have. Just tell us everything um, really that prevents you from getting that applicate that GPA higher. And again, like I said, that's based on an unweighted scale. Um, but like I said, if you have a weighted GPA because it's accounting for AP or IB or honors credit or anything like that, um, we're still going to take that into account. Even if your unweighted is lower than your weighted GPA, we're still going to take that all into account. So don't worry. Don't stress too much about that aspect of it. And like I mentioned, maybe if you tune, tuned into the session a little bit later, we are having virtual events every single day. Um, so we do have more presentations that are like this. So if you maybe tuned in halfway through and um, you still want to get back and get the information, this session is recorded. So you will be able to access it later on. But if you want to ask questions live in a virtual session like that, you can check out our virtual events. Um, we're doing those daily um, at different times. So check out our website and register for one of those, hop on our Instagram. Um, you can DM us on there and we're also gonna be answering your questions there, so. So I got a question about research, so, um, are undergraduate students able to participate in research? And the answer is yes. Um, lots of folks think that research is just for our master's students, um, but that is not the case. Our undergraduate students, even our freshmen, even during their first semester, participate in research. Um, and that can look like a couple of different things. Maybe you work with a professor who is um, pioneering their own study and um, discovering something new in their field and you wanna work as an assistant with them and help them out with that study, that's an option. Usually that's a paid position too. So that's a great experience, not only for the work and the professional experience, helps you get some cash on the side too, but you also help build that relationship with the professor that you can use as a reference later on. Or maybe you have an idea of something you wanna study on your own. Maybe um, there's a breakthrough that you know you're gonna discover or um, there's a field you want to study more about or a solution um, that you want to come up with for a worldwide problem. Um, you can conduct your own study through our Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, or UROP for short. Um, this is essentially a program where you can apply to get funding to conduct and head your own study. So that's a great option. Um, if you want to be a published researcher by the time you graduate with your bachelor's, that's an incredible option that you might not find at every institution and you certainly won't find at every single institution, but um, that's one of the perks about going to a large school. Sometimes going to a large school intimidates some folks and they're not sure about that. But like I said, we try to offer the small school experience, but if the large school setting does intimidate you, also think about all the different aspects and opportunities that come with being a large school. We're usually able to offer more programs, more majors, more study abroad experiences, more internship experiences, more research, just a little bit more of everything. As I mentioned earlier, I like to say, the only limit really is your imagination. I also wanna highlight our learning abroad office, and we call them our learning abroad office because not only can you study abroad, we can also do internships abroad, like I mentioned. We have global internships, um, and those can be in a wide range of fields. That could be business, that could be a language-based one, political science, um, anything like that. Sustainability is a big one globally, too. That's a big conversation. So um, 
you can actually go onto their website and search the programs that they typically offer. Um, it will say that all of them are inactive because no one's traveling right now internationally, um, but you can still see what the offerings are there. And most of our learning abroad programs are offered by the University of Utah with our faculty, but we also do partner with some other universities or third party um, organizations and companies to offer experiences in other countries that um, we may not be able to consistently offer. So we like to say we have opportunities on all seven continents, including Antarctica, because we have in the past partnered um, with an organization to have um, students in the math field study um, really ice in Antarctica. So if you really like cold places and you really like math, that's a really awesome option too. All right, definitely don't be shy with your questions. Pop them into the Q&A and I'm happy to get to them. We have a few more minutes, so if you have burning questions, get them there so we can make sure to get those answered before the end of the night. Okay, question about um, personal essays and letters of recommendation. Um, do we require them? We do not. Um, our application does not require personal essays or letters of recommendation, and we will not review them if they are submitted. Um, uh, in the writing sec section of the Common App, there's the personal essay section, but then below that, there's an additional information section. So the additional information section is where you want to give us information about hardships um, or any other extra information you want to tell us to aid in your application. Um, but we do not read personal essays submitted to the personal essay section. And same thing with letters of recommendation. Um, we do not review those and will not consider them. Now, the business scholars and the honors college applications both require essays. So if you're interested in applying for those, they require essays in their sections and they will review them. Um, if you are writing essays in the Common App, whether it's our application or, or anyone else's, write your essay in Word or Google Docs or some other format first before pasting it in Common App, because Common App does not automatically spell check um, or do grammar check. So um, definitely uh, put that in Word or in, or in Google Doc first so you can make sure you're getting that spell check and the grammar check before submitting. Okay, we got a question asking, how many classes can you take at a time? Um, you can take, I believe, up to 18 credit hours without uh, advisor approval. If for some reason you need or want to take more than 18 credit hours, which is about five classes in a given semester, um, you can, but you'll have to get advisor approval. And they usually want to prove that during your first semester or even your first year. Most students are probably gonna start their first semester with four classes, which is about 12 credit hours, and that's what's needed to be considered full-time. Um, but again, depending on the rigor of your program, maybe if you are going into engineering, lots of times those students will take 15 or up to 18 credit hours. So that might be four, um, that may be five or six classes. Um, so that's kind of the range. A lot of students stick between the 12 and 15 and again it depends maybe if you're taking biology one and you're taking the lecture with the lab that'll be four credit hours so that might look like you take 14 credit hours or something um, more even or odd like that so um, that really uh, will vary but about I would say expect to take around um, 12 to 15 and most students are going to start slower off they're going to start with maybe 12 their first year or first semester and then they'll kind of gradually build up to 15 or maybe 16, 17, 18. So we also have summer coursework um, and um, if you want to take classes the summer after your first year but you don't want to pay that out-of-state rate, well good news, all of our summer classes are always charged the in-state tuition rate no matter your residency status. So that's a great option if you want to knock out a few more credits 
um, but get that in-state tuition rate kind of early on. Um, look into some summer classes. Mariah, I'm gonna shine back in here because we have reached our 45 minute mark. So I wanted to give you a big thank you for presenting to our uh, viewing families and students um, about the University of Utah. And uh, uh, so a big thank you from MOACAC. Um, and then I need to go over a few housekeeping items with, some, with the students and families that are viewing before they, they leave. So is there anything you wanna say to wrap up? Um, I just want to say one thank you again for joining me and for listening to my spiel and, and for continuing the college search process during this odd time. And I'm sure many other universities and colleges can say the same, but um, we're really help, here to help you make an informed decision and get you the information you need to make that decision. So don't be afraid and don't hesitate to reach out to us. Most definitely. Most definitely. Awesome. So uh, once again, thank you, Mariah. And for those of you still tuning in, um, right after we close out this uh, information session, um, this presentation, there's going to be a brief four question survey. Uh, we'd really appreciate it if you took your, some time to provide feedback about um, the Find Your Future uh, event. Um, also, this is just one of many sessions that's being hosted by MOACAC. So you can go on MOACAC.org and sign up for any additional sessions for schools that you may be interested in uh, learning more about. And in about a week, you will be able to access this session's recording live and refer back to any questions um, that may have been asked and the answers to those uh, live at moacac.org. So thank you all for tuning in. Have a great rest of your evening and um, best of luck in your college search process. Mm-hmm.